Aquarius single friends. Thank you for joining me. I'm David. That's Tara, my love. And uh, today uh, we're going to do your uh, singles read. I call it. It's the four pillars. And I want to point out that on Saturdays, I always do uh, Aquarius and Pisces. So do the heart spread. That's for someone that's on your mind. And right now do also the four pillars, which is for singles, super single, completely singles. It's what we're doing right now. If I had any more readings that are oriented towards a sign, if they're Pisces and Aquarius, they will be on Saturday, so pretty regimented. Um, so we're going to look at your person. It's a little bit different read, I think, for singles read. Um, we're not looking for flaws and everything. What we're doing is we're trying to find the one that's right for you. Um, and we're asking Tarot, and we're asking Spirit to show us through Tarot who your person is, reveal things about them. Um, I pre-shuffled. Um, so uh, we'll look at the four pillars, I call it, four pillars of a relationship. That's the emotional compatibility, intellectual compatibility, sexual and love compatibility, and uh, the core values, I call it, and lifestyle uh, compatibility issues here. And I also do look at the astrology, too, and astrologers, so I look for that. I often, I don't know why with this, I often pull the Mercury and very easily, and I can pull the Venus and uh, Mars too usually sometimes the Sun uh, I'm a little fuzzy uh, but well that's okay because I'm just gonna describe try to get pick up some stories pick up some personal history and really focus on how, how their mind works and, and how their heart works here so let's start here I'm just gonna lay them out this is this uh, in their emotional nature uh, we're gonna have the Sun and we're gonna have the high priestess very powerful um, Wow uh, two of Cups, this is in their intellectual nature, and the Death card. Okay, in a sexual, we have the Moon. Okay, we have the Knight of Wands. Core values and lifestyle, the Chariot. Man, we're getting a lot of Major Kana with this person. And... Uh, we have the Two of Swords. This is in their core values and lifestyle, okay? Um, I usually don't clarify this. If I do, I'll be using the Klimt Dart deck. Um, we'll see. Um, I just clarify if things aren't clear. Usually this comes pretty clear. Your person is amazing, um, really. Um, I don't know where to start. I usually start with the emotions, um, and I got Pisces moon big time. Um, this is a beautiful person. I mean, they're so full of like love and positivity and life. Uh, so this is going to come across. And also you got this two of cups up here. Uh, showing uh, with the death card on the bottom towards the intellect. Uh, we'll get into that. Uh, but this is someone that's uh, uh, very charming, very uh, warm. Um, they probably be the kind of person that mm, gushes a little bit. And um, they make when they make an entrance, they might be like, ah, oh, and people uh, kind of, um, have they it's a really good vibe too. I mean, you're gonna be. I see them smiling a lot. Like they just can't not smile. I mean, it's like, uh, and it's a very warm, sincere smile. That's sort of like they have an aura about them. It's kind of like you want to be around them, as if they're like it's kind of cold out, and they're the campfire, you know. And you want to kind of get close to them. Uh, I think of an old saying, you know, from American Indians. I urge like a, a white man makes a big fire. He can't get close. Indian makes a little fire get close you want to get close to their fire that's the sun um, and this is someone that is never has a bad word to say about anybody and they're just so genuinely positive and with the high priestess this is in the core uh, of the unconscious here this is the emotions the unconscious the moon energy is what I see here this is the intellect the mercury the sun energy their consciousness here um, so being in the core of the unconscious here in the high priestess, this person is off the charts intuitive. Like they don't have to think. They just know. And they very well here. Look at them being the chariot and the two of swords. They could be a 
light worker, energy worker, psychic, uh, medium. Let's see, medium, 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 pulling in, medium two. It would be receptive feminine energy, cancers. Yeah, it could be. Um, uh, I'm not picking up specifically medium, but it's, might, they might include that in what they do because with the high priestess here, I mean, they're very well connected. Uh, in fact, this moon might, it's probably going to be in the 12th or 8th house. You look at their natal chart. Usually, I, I've done a lot of work with psychics and energy workers over the years. Love it. Anybody, please come to me because <laughs> I know how to look at your charts, the kind of to look for. And usually, you see energy in the 8th house. This is where you see the psychic ability. And I'm going to call it psychic ability. I think this person just full on probably a psychic. You know, I don't know if I've ever really said that before, but full on, no doubt, full on. So you got death card down here, Scorpio card too. Um, I think we're looking at maybe a Scorpio personality and very much a Scorpio Mercury, okay, um, in terms of their personality. Um, uh, so, and you know, this death card being down here in the bottom too, um, this is again why I say next to the pre high priestess, crazy intuitive. Uh, and you know, it's not, it, they don't have to think because they just get it. You know, it's like Sherlock Holmes. It's like, you know, it, it was great uh, foil, uh, Watson, right? Because then Watson goes, well, I don't know, Sherlock, how did you ever guess that that person was the murderer? And then Sherlock does his thing. And it's like, well, it wasn't psychic. It was because of the little details and intuitive things. And the motherfucker was a psychic. We just don't call it a psychic, you know. And this is an important lesson for psychics. Not this person because they could probably teach me. Um, but, um, you know, the psychic stuff, a lot of times it is for me. You know, I hear thoughts that are not mine. And I learn to recognize them and trust them. They never say bad things. My thoughts never say, go hurt people. <laughs> You know, they say help people. They say, you know, you don't need to be a dick, Dave. It's okay. Take a pill. Uh, you know, everything's going to be positive like that. Um, so um, that's what it is. They, 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 they get, they see the little things and they put them, the patterns together. And um, you could sit down both with someone after an hour and you're going to walk away. And this person's going to know everything about them. And you're not. You're, you listened to the same thing. You sat there with them. You were right there. You didn't go to the bathroom the whole time, right? But you are not getting what your partner's getting because they're picking up on everything. Their body language, the pheromones, maybe. They may, may be conscious of it. This is how it works, I think. But, man, this person is on it like that. Um, and they, they are a very, uh, uh, romantically oriented person. They probably, they might do their work, uh, with soulmate work, twin flame work, <laughs> this kind of thing having to do with love. Um, and they would do it in a very positive way. Now looking at the sexuality, what did I say? Scorpio Mercury we might be dealing with a Scorpio sun. And then, so you're going to have Scorpio and Leo. Libra, Virgo, and then Leo. I got a feeling they got a Leo Mars. So they might have an early degree uh, Scorpio Sun. And I bet you the Mercury's conjunct. If you look at their natal chart, you're looking for a Pisces moon, a Scorpio Sun with the Mercury conjunct. That's not all that unusual. <laughs> but I got a feeling that that'll be the case. And this is what gives them their insight too and I they might have an eighth house sun like that that mercury and sun maybe both in the eighth house I wouldn't be surprised and so they'd have probably a late degree Mars uh, and Leo and my god do I love a Mars it's the I'm sad uh, Mars so um, they might disappoint in every other way but never in sex <laughs> so I uh, look for them to be crazy passionate you know um, in terms of the Venus sign, uh, it's not going to be cancer, uh, and uh, it's probably going to be a Scorpio Venus. I'm a Scorpio Venus. Um, so you might have a Scor Scorpio Venus and, uh, Leo Mars and holy shit, the uh, passion. I mean, um, this again, it makes a lot of sense because a Scorpio Venus is basically psychic, whether you want to admit it or not. Um, kind of gets in her own way. Um, problem with this, with the Venus energy, I don't think they have this problem, 
uh, but you tend to pick up people's intentions, uh, uh, and they don't. We don't always follow through with our intentions. I mean, even this person would never think this way. I do sometimes. Uh, that's when my guides say, "Dave, take <laughs> take it down a notch." Um, but it might be like that bastard wants to kill me. I mean, we should kill them first, <laughs> you know. And as uh, being Scorpios, you know, we gotta learn that just because you know we pick up on the fact someone's not into us, someone's hostile to us, someone we pick up on they're hiding something from us. Very sensitive, and and with the being uh, Venus being you know de detriment in Scorpio, uh, we tend to. Uh, turn it around so it becomes negative and it's a lot of paranoia involved, that kind of thing. Um, so with the Venus and Scorpio, um, it, in the way they are psychically, and good thing you're their soulmate, it's like you're never going to get one over. You know, I know a lot of psychics and it, it's always shocking to them when their partner pulls one over on them because they, they not only have the normal pain of that, which to me it's like the fucking worst, but then they'd start to doubt their own abilities, you know, because how come I didn't see this? I see everybody else, what's happening, and I, these people fucked me, and I never even saw it. Um, but I don't think that's going to happen to this person, uh, because I think they're that good. They would definitely know. Um, they're the kind of person, they would know by the, the way you text with them. They literally would understand, like, the mood you're in. You might just text something that has nothing to do with anything, just like, I'm, hey, I'm on my way to work, and, you know, I just want to say hi, and how you doing, and... Um, they go, what's wrong? What's going on? <laughs> and they're picking it up just off the text. It's the, the, the time that you text, the, the way that you text, the words you choose to use. You know, they just pick up on every little thing, like, like minutely. Um, like a spider senses the slightest movement in their web and they go right to it, you know. Their web is just like the whole world. And they're picking up on it. And then, you know, with the chariot here, it's very important, I think, too, why I think they are working psychic. Um, they're taking it on the road. And the chariot is very much being, I think, in alignment with our soul's purpose, with our destiny. That's when we're in alignment with our north node in astrology. And God, I hope that wasn't in the reading. I <laughs> got my cord from the mic. Uh, with the north node in astrology, they're following their life's purpose. And I work with a lot of psychics, and I'm telling you, uh, with real psychics, I can see it in their chart when they're young and they're working and they're doing the work. Because usually we don't work, we work up to our north node later in life. We get a little older. But I see people coming in like these crystal children and star children. And I mean, they're 22 years old. I think of this guy, Sky. Uh, what's his? Uh, uh, in, uh, intuitive Tarot, Sky Intuitive Tarot. Uh, does astrologies, uh, Aquarius Sky. Uh, and he's such a young guy. I think, you know, there's no way you have that much wisdom at that tender of an age if you didn't come in with it and you weren't meant to share your gift. So this is someone that incarnated literally meant to share this gift with the world. So keep that in mind. If you're going to be joining this. They're not going to stop doing this. You'll become like a part of this in some way, you know. Uh, even if, you know, you go to work and they go to work and it's going to be doing their psychic thing. Um, and the Two of Swords down here, I think, shows that they have this ability um, to go heart over mind. Um, and it's sort of like just that ability of, like, their thoughts, they can make them, uh, they understand maybe if they have a thought, um, they understand kind of what it means, and they can put it into that perspective. It's how they do their psychic stuff. And I got the feeling, like, this person uh, could kind of uh, care less about where you live, <laughs> In terms of lifestyle, um, they're probably very healthy, very balanced. Uh, I, they're, they're not triggery. They're, they're not going to, like, they might be a vegetarian, but they're never going to say to you, hey, you need to be a vegetarian, um, that kind of thing. Um, and I think they just adapt. Uh, if you want to live in the country, they're going to live in the country. If you want to live in the city, they're going to live in the city. Um, I don't really see children here so much. Um but uh, if there's children involved, I mean, they'd be a wonderful parent, you know. Um, and I kind of have the sense with this person, like maybe they've never been married. So they might tell you that story, how they've been single. Um, they may have had some significant attachments. They've never probably had real difficulties. I'm not going to tell you any horror stories. They had a fine childhood. Um, uh, they probably had a mother who was a fire sign. And might be significant. This is the sun in their life. Uh, not in a bad way. 
meaning they have a mother who's very supportive and loving and open and maybe uh, outgoing and fun and it's going to be a great thing for you because if mom comes to visit in the future you're not going to hate it i mean it's going to be a wonderful charming outgoing person that everyone loves to be around i think if you look at the mom they kind of see uh and so during their childhood they had nothing but support and positivity they didn't have any difficulties they learned early on that they could trust themselves you know here's a story they're going to tell it just came to me they're going to tell you this story about being psychic when they were a child. They're one of these children that was telling the mom, hey, mom, I was talking to Billy over here. Oh, yeah? Yeah, he's my age, and, you know, his face is all messed up. I don't understand. I'm kind of scared. It looks like he's hurt. I mean, Maybe you need to help him. Maybe mom understood, you know, and this makes a huge difference in a child's life and maybe help the, this person uh, to kind of understand their abilities and was open to them, wasn't afraid of them. You know, it's like instead of saying to the child when they're angry, oh, don't make that angry face. That's no good because you're busy and you want to deal with it. You say to them, oh, you're upset, aren't you? Because I didn't make your pancakes this morning. And so I know you're very angry. And it's just like acknowledging their anger, teaching them that that feeling is anger, and showing them that it's okay instead of showing them like you shouldn't be angry. And so they have anger issues all their life. So when they came around and started talking about their, I'll tell you this, uh, the mom, maybe the dad too, particularly the mom, was really supportive of them and really helped them. Maybe the mom's psychic too. I don't know. Uh, but gave them the good guidance. And so they're terribly grounded. They don't have really any issues around family and stuff. I mean, they're pretty clear. Again, I think this person came in to this life specifically to do this work uh, and to help people. And I think they do. And now you're going to be a part of that. Um, Aquarius. <laughs> Uh, so I hope you like this reading. Please give me a like or a thumbs up. Feel free to comment. I really appreciate it. And I really appreciate everybody subscribing. Thank you, guys.